Welcome back to This Week. We continue our conversations with the candidates for mayor of Nashville tonight. Democratic State Representative, State Senator, excuse me, from Nashville, Jeff Yarborough, now also a candidate for mayor. Nice to see you as always. Thanks for having me back, Bob. You're already in the hunt. In fact, some worry that maybe your voice is more needed on, in, in Washington, or in, on Capitol Hill here in Tennessee than in the mayor's office. So it's con concerned that, that your voice is strong up there. Obviously, you want to be the mayor of this great city. Why do you want to be mayor and move to that position? And why, maybe more importantly, do you feel you're the right person at this particular time to lead this great city? Well, I've been very appreciative of people who think that I've been an important voice for Nashville in the Senate. But I'll tell you what, Bob, if we don't have a mayor who's capable of working with the state, standing up to the state, it's going to be a long road for the city. Look, Nashville deserves a mayor who's going to make this city work and work for all of us. I think that means you've got to keep people safe, educate our kids, and deal with the amazing growth that's happening in our city. But we know that housing and infrastructure haven't kept up. And I think what separates me from the other people in this field is that no one knows in this, in this race knows the state, the city, all of the issues that we are facing, and has a record of success on all of them. I mean, I've passed legislation to work on affordable housing, to work on transportation, to work on public education. And I think that we need a proven record of someone who's not just talking the talk, but has done the work. You probably know more than anyone to be a successful mayor. Success at anything, you have to have relationships. You have, as a mayor, you have to have good relationships with your department heads, with, this, with the citizens of Nashville, with the Metro Council, and obviously the state of Tennessee. And again, you have more insight than maybe most. How do you rebuild the burn bridge that has happened between the state and Tennessee, and at the same time, keep the authority of the mayor's office, keep the authority of the Metro Council and the city of Nashville intact? Right. Well, I think that that's going to be a challenge for whoever the next mayor is. And look, I'm not going to be starting from scratch because right. I've already built those relationships over a decade with the governor, with his administration, with legislators on both sides of the aisle, on both chambers. And I think that that's a starting point, but that's also not enough. What we have to do is we have to be much more strategic in the way we deal with the state. I'll tell you the other thing, Bob, that people don't think about as much is it really matters how much we are united in this city. Mm -hmm. When the business and political and civic leadership of Nashville is on the same page, we're pretty unstoppable. When we're fractured, it's pretty easy to pick us apart. And the next mayor has to bring the city together so we're in a better shape, not just to solve our own problems, but to deal with the state. How do you look at this race? You, if elected, would be the fourth mayor in five years in Nashville. The city's looking for some stability. Do you see this, and, and this is not a, a cut at anybody, but most of the candidates have similar positions on the issues. Do you see this as an issue election, or is the city looking for leadership? Is this a leadership election? I think there's no question that the city is looking and is in desperate need of strong, stable leadership right now. As you said, Bob, we're going to be hitting our fourth mayor in a five-year period. Uh, by reference, we went the first th we had 40 <laughs> years of Metro with six mayors. So, I mean, I think that that is critical that we actually are going to have someone that Nashville can trust to have their back, to stand up for the city and that they know can bring people together and get things done. With voters, as well, as, again, as well as you know, there is some concern. There is not a lot of trust with politicians among voters. How do you rebuild that trust? How do you say, listen, I know that there's concerns out there, but I can stand by my word. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to get things done in this city. Well, I think it starts by telling the truth. I mean, you know, if you have integrity, nothing else matters. And if you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. And I think that starts with the person who's in the office. Uh, but I also, I think we have to be much more responsive in Nashville. Uh, the, you know, great cities are yeah. developing much more robust technologies to deal with citizen complaints, to bring in citizen input, and to make it make sure that people not only, you know, can send send a comment in but make their voice heard. And I think the next mayor has to take that very seriously. So many great things for this city that are happening, but there are also issues. We have crime, we have housing concerns, too much to expense, we have homelessness issues. In your first four years, say you can only get one thing accomplished, get one thing solved, what would that top issue be? Well, I mean, if I had to pick one thing that the city has to get right, it's housing because it's the source of almost all of our other issues. You think, like I talked to a teacher on Saturday who 
loved teaching, was teaching in Metro High School, was going back to get a master's somewhere else because she can't afford to live in Nashville. Talked to a police officer two weeks ago, same exact story. Not sure if he can stay on the force because he can't afford to live here. That's true for employers. It's, a true, it's one of the uh, things that's spurring our growing po uh, homelessness problem. It is an issue that cuts across the city and it also, right now, our strategy is really drive until you can afford something. And what that's leading to is not just people not being able to live where they want to, it means it's clogging up the roads and making everyone's quality of life worse. Our conversation with National Mayoral Candidate Jeff Yarborough continues in a moment. Stay with us. This week continues when we come back. Welcome back in our conversation with National Mayoral Candidate Jeff Yarborough. You, you know more again than, than many others. You've seen the change with the new public education funding policy here in Tennessee. It effectively means less money for Metro schools because the money now goes to the students and whenever a student leaves, the money goes with it. As mayor, how do you make up for that loss? How do you keep this minority majority school system viable, attractive and working? Well, I mean, I think it has to be a, a key priority. And look, there's nothing that matters more to me and my family. I have, t I have two ch children in Na Metro Nashville Public Schools. What Nashville provides a quality education is the most important thing to my family, and I know that's true for lots of families. We have to increase enrollment, and we have to increase confidence in, across the citizens of Nashville that we're doing the best for their children. We also have to work with some of these newer things where we've got vouchers and, mm -hmm. and, and so much disruption that's being put on to us by the state. We need to, to try to get a handle on that. And finally, there's some parts of this formula that just aren't really fair to Nashville or other places in the state. It just, it costs more to live here as a teacher. Right. We need to partner up with other districts that are dealing with that issue and actually try to ensure that the funding formula counts for reality. I think Metro Police Chief John Drake is doing a really good job here in Nashville. He's, he's suppressing crime, but there's still issues. We're having more juvenile crime, a lot of guns being stolen from cars, uh, more attacks downtown on tourists, uh, con concerns, people are afraid. What do you do to help Chief Drake continue to suppress the crime here in Nashville, to keep Nashville safe, to keep it as attractive as it is? Well, I mean, I think that if we get everything else right and fail to keep people safe, it doesn't matter if we get everything else right. It's, a, a, it's, it's an essential requirement for running a city. I think right now we know that we are not fully staffed in mm -hmm. our police force. The, the chief needs to have a fully staffed, well-trained, well-compensated and accountable police force. I think that that's how you start. But I think we also have to do some of the things that get at the root causes of, of, of crime. We don't do enough effective interventions with people who are coming into our, our juvenile justice system, first oftentimes as victims of abuse and neglect before entering into as, as for delinquent conduct. And we have to be better at not throwing people away, but investing in them when we, when we can. Uh, the other weird thing here, Bob, there's some things that we can do in the physical environment that actually really make a difference. I mean, there are research that shows that just improving street lights mm. in certain neighborhoods can actually decrease what crime occurs there overnight by 20 and 30 percent. And we should be smart across the board. There's a consensus Nashville is behind when it comes to mass transit. Even if you have a plan, it's going to be 10 years before it's implemented. What, do we, what can you do as mayor to get this ball rolling, to begin the process so that 10 years from now, at least there's an infrastructure that has begun for mass transit? It has to happen. Well, I'll tell you one of the big problems is that we've got to stop choosing a new transit <laughs> vision every time we elect a new mayor. Because the way you think about transit has to extend over decades. And so I do think the next mayor has to act urgently. But what you've got to build here is a consensus that's, you know, not a perfect consensus, mm -hmm. but at least enough alignment that we can start making real deal investments and moving that ball down the road. About a minute to go, what do you want to say to the voters of Nashville here in Davidson County of why Jeff Yarborough should be the next mayor of this great city? Well, I think that this is a high stakes moment for the people of Nashville and I think that voters get that and I think that's why they're paying such close attention and wrestling with this vote but I think that this is a moment where you need leadership where you need someone with experience to really jump into those issues that we know are at the, the core of our city and that means we can feel right now like growth is happening to us and not for us and I think 
finding a house you can afford, living in, in a neighborhood you love near schools you trust shouldn't feel like winning the lottery, but increasingly it does. Driving to work or dropping your kids off at school shouldn't feel like an obstacle course, but that's how it is. And we need a mayor who has experience getting things done to come in and work on those issues and improve people's lives in this city. Jeff Yarborough, candidate for mayor of Nashville. Appreciate your time and your insight. Good luck with the campaign. Thanks so much. Stay Bob. with us. This week continues in a moment. I want to thank you for spending part of your weekend with us. That will do it for another edition of This Week. I do want to thank my guest, Nashville mayoral candidate Jeff Yarborough. We hope to see you back here next weekend for another edition of This Week. Between now and then, have a great week and have a great Father's Day weekend.